What's up guys? Today I'm going to be reviewing the Zcam E2. Okay, so this is my E2 rigged up in uh, one particular configuration where I can like, you know, put it on my shoulder. Uh, I'd have to move the magic arm and stuff. But this is a camera that I've had, ooh, yikes. This is a camera <laughs> that I've had for uh, over two years now. I got mine on January 8th of 2019. So I've had this camera for a while uh, and I made some videos about it before, but now I kind of want to do my final review on the camera. Uh, and this is going to be a review, not just of the particular model that I have, but just like an overall review of the Zcam system. Um, you know, since I've been pretty familiar with it now uh, and with the brand for about two years. So the way this video is going to be broken up is first I'm going to explain why you would want to get this camera over other cameras on the market. Then I'm going to talk about how this camera performs in general. And then I'm going to explain who would want to get this camera and who would want to stay away from this camera. Okay, so why would you want to get this camera over um, many of the other cameras on the market? So the first reason is the form factor. It's in a form factor that's similar to RED cameras and other just general cinema cameras where you have a box um, that's really modular and you can rig it out however you want. Uh, if you have a mirrorless camera or even a camera like the Black Magics, uh, those are shaped differently and you run into certain issues when you're rigging those out. For example, like adding V-mount batteries and such, sometimes you could be blocking the screen on your other cameras, so on and so forth, making the screen kind of like halfway useless. Um, well, you know, not useful for half of its purpose, um, you know, if you don't have a fully articulating screen. Um, so just having a box that you can build out into whatever form factor works for you, um, to me, is a big advantage versus having to build around something that's already a bit of an odd shape. And along with this form factor comes the modularity. On the back of the Zcam, there's a ton of different ports, um, USB-C, uh, LAN, um, you know, there's Wi-Fi, there's a COM port. Uh, on my current rig, I have at the back um, this COM port uh, being hooked up to my Ninja 5 to control uh, the camera settings. Um, I'm also using the USB-C port to record to SSDs when I'm recording in Zero. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of different uses for having a lot of those different ports. Um, and it just allows for more options. And having more options is always good. Because of the form factor and modularity, I can actually do things like just completely remove this top handle really quickly and remove the camera from this actual assembly. Sometime I'll have a V-mount of battery on here instead of using the NPFs. Uh, in that case, I can take some cords out of the back, um, take off my top handle, put the Ninja 5 and the Z-cam. I've got to stop doing that. <laughs> yeah, and I can put my Ninja 5 and the Z-cam on a gimbal really quickly and easily um, and yeah it's just really convenient uh, because of the cube form factor. And with those ports on the back um, it gives you different options like connecting your camera directly to your computer via ethernet, uh, bypassing having to buy or pay for another device like a external capture card. Uh, you can stream 4K video to live stream or record to your computer directly via Ethernet. Um, and when you think about like what this camera offers and this camera system offers for the price, those are things that you have to factor in because other cameras don't have that capability. So if you want to do something like live stream with many of those other cameras, what you're going to have to do is buy another device for maybe like $200 if you want to do like 4K capture or maybe three, I don't know how much those actually cost right now, but uh, 
yeah, you're gonna have to pay extra money to get that feature when you have that built into this camera. And the build quality of this camera body is honestly amazing. Uh, Z cam cameras are built like tanks. The whole thing is just one uh, solid piece of metal, it feels like. Uh, I have, you know, <laughs> been through some rough times with this camera now that I've had it for two years. It's seen some drops and like some crazy things that we will not mention in this video. Um, getting one over. Uh, but uh, it still works. It still works, which is insane. It's completely a tank. And in terms of like the build quality and reliability, like it, I would definitely give it a 10 out of 10 because I'm not, the, you know, the most gentle on my gear and it definitely hangs. Uh, this camera also has a lot of great codecs. Um, and it has a lot of options for codecs, H.264, H.265, 8-bit, 10-bit, then there's 12-bit RAW, 14-bit uh, RAW with Z-RAW, um, and ProRes RAW. So essentially, every kind of option that you would want, pretty much outside of Blackmagic RAW, which realistically isn't going to happen, you know, you have in this camera, which is awesome. It's really incredible. And this camera system has probably the best, if not, you know, the best, like definitely top three uh, camera control apps just in existence. Uh, it's, especially when you hook it up with a actual cable to the camera, completely latency free. You can control every single function of the camera, like all the menus, uh, all the deep settings, everything. You have all of your uh, view assist tools you have uh, your like waveform like literally everything uh, you have within this app uh, and it pretty much turns your phone or iPad into a full-fledged monitor uh, almost uh, which is again insane and the app comes in handy in a lot of different situations. You can use it, uh, you know, if you have it hooked up wired uh, on an iPad or bigger screen and someone else can be looking somewhere else on set, they could pull focus from it. it can, you could use it as like a director's monitor or you could have people hook up wirelessly from their phones so that multiple people on set can be looking because sometimes people are just interested in seeing what, you know, the camera is capturing. Um, so that does a lot. Oh. There's a, there's a ghost in the background. Yeah, so having that app is a huge plus and it adds a lot of versatility to this camera. And you can live stream also from the app. So if you connect uh, your phone and you don't have a computer, you can still live stream even right from the camera through your phone's connection straight to like YouTube or you know anywhere else that you can get a stream key from it's insane all of the things that you can do with this camera uh, and the last reason uh, you would get into buying a Zcam camera is just the Zcam community and ecosystem so when I bought this camera it was just gonna be a camera that had 10-bit you know ProRes H.265 and the community requested and Zcam delivered adding two different raw codecs, um, more frame rates beyond what you know it was launched with, and just so many different things. Even as far as designing the interchangeable mounts, uh, that was an idea that the community created. And now you can get the Z cams uh, in the if you get like an M4 or an well not an M4 because M4 you would only want a micro four thirds mount really. But uh, if you get an S6 or F6, um, you can have PL mount, you can have E mount, you can have EF mount, you can get micro four thirds mount. Um, it's just such a versatile system and they actually implement the requests from the community uh, and add features beyond what you know even they planned or thought was possible uh, and that's just a really cool exciting thing uh, people in the community are always there to answer questions uh, so it's a real benefit it's uh, similar I've heard to like the red community in that the red community is also really active and you know really helpful it's a kind of a similar vibe on the Zcam Facebook group 
And yeah, that's just a big plus because if you get into like, let's say, well, I don't know. I don't know what le like, let's say the Confinity community is like, but I don't know if there's like as much support or as much like, you know, constant firmware upgrades and things like that and adding features as Zcam has been doing. I can only speak for Zcam because I don't own a Confinity or any of those other cameras, but I know for a fact the Zcam community and the Zcam ecosystem is constantly growing and innovating. Uh, and that's a big plus, you know, anytime a company actually listens to its consumers, uh, you know, yeah, it's great, you know, that's what they're supposed to do. So kudos for that. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about how this camera performs. Um, so first, let's talk about battery life. Uh, you can, by default, power this camera with NPF batteries, uh, and a lot of people also use this with a Ninja 5 for Pro as Raw uses the same batteries. A lot of things use NPF batteries, so that's a plus of having this camera. And the battery life on the E2 and the E2 M4 uh, and the, the E2C, all really great like if you get a 975 like one of the NPF 975 I think batteries you can run it for hours run any of those as you get into the larger sensors just because you know there's more pixels larger sensor you're gonna use more power so I'm not sure because I don't own those cameras but I know for a fact the battery life does get a little worse with the larger sensors and the higher resolutions, you know, going up to 6K and 8K, which makes sense, more processing, larger sensor. Uh, but what a lot of people do is also just power it via V-mount because there is, uh, well, there are many actually different accessories. I have one where you can plug directly into the back where the NPF goes and attach a V-mount uh, via this bracket i've also used uh like just a regular bat v-mount battery plate that goes on rails and then you can take like a d-tap out of that and go into the zcam power port uh you know with the same adapter that you use like you know through uh wall powering and stuff like that so really versatile in terms of power options the battery life on like i said the e2 and the e2 m4 i can speak for really great hours like at least three hours if not more off of one of like actual recording off of one uh, like 975 which is great of course that's going to be like less with the larger sensor cameras so you know that i think that probably varies for the s and f6 but and the F8, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think overall the battery life is really good. Uh, and you have a lot of different battery options. You know, if you don't want to use the biggest 975s, like when I sh fly on a gimbal, I'm actually using the really small NPF batteries. And those can also power the camera, not for as long, of course, but you have lots of different options. Whereas many other cameras, by default, there's one battery, you know, you can rig up something else, but with this camera, especially when you have one of the Micro Four Thirds sensors, you don't have to rig it up with any like crazy power solution. The NPF solution that's just built into the camera works really great. So the reliability of this camera is really good. Um, I haven't had any like failures or really any any issues <laughs> with this camera at all actually um the only kind of thing is uh, if you're coming from some of the mirrorless cameras like you know the startup time and switching between profiles sometimes is a little bit long um but other than that like there are and that's not a glitch that's just a function of like how these camera work cameras work uh so you know that is a downside but other than that like it's really good and is really usable in pretty much any situation except for you know a few that i'll cover later on in the video and the image quality from these cameras uh well i have the e2 so with the micro four thirds sensor is good uh i don't know if i would necessarily say it's the best you know between it and the black magic um you know it's really like a matter of preference um, and I don't know if it necessarily has like the most dynamic range 
or whatever because i i don't do like the scientific tests to compare those two i'm sure those have been done in other reviews and you could check those out but for my cases where a lot of times i'm lighting stuff or if i'm not um you know i'm just mindful about like how i'm shooting things i haven't noticed anything with the image quality that turns me off the colors are really really good like really really <laughs> like you don't really have to do much if you shoot in like flat or z-log with the z-log color plug-in or you could even shoot rec 709 on this camera and it looks good uh so the image quality is definitely good i don't know if it's best in class you know it's really a toss-up i think maybe the black magic because at work we shoot on the 6ks a lot and those are definitely better but that's a different sensor so i'm not sure if the 4ks um are going to be better but you know they do have the advantage of shooting in b-raw which i think right now is like the best uh raw codec or at least my favorite so that is kind of like you know when it comes to the image of this camera it is lacking in some areas you it, it could be argued but honestly <laughs> And yeah, it doesn't really matter to me. It looks really good to me. You know what I mean? It looked really good to me. I have no problems with it. I, it has enough, you know, dynamic range and stuff for most of the things that I want to do. You know, it'd be nice to have a little more in the highlights sometimes. But, you know, then you get like, you know, a super 35 mil camera like, you know, the Blackmagic 6K or the S6 or something like that. It, you know, because I think that those jumps up to the larger sensors do make a big difference um so yeah when it comes to image it's not going to be the craziest thing on the market but it's definitely good it's definitely solid it's definitely enough to do pretty much anything you would ever realistically need to shoot this camera has two well really for me i consider it like one and a half uh major flaws right if you know you would consider it that way or, or really things that it's missing that some other more expensive cameras have right and that's you know there's always a trade-off you know this is a really nice affordable camera system so what do you lose right well when you compare it to systems like specifically canon cinema cameras and sony cinema cameras there are two areas where these cameras are not good one, where I count it as kind of like a half point right away from this camera, is the autofocus. Because it's not like this is the only cinema camera that doesn't have autofocus, right? That's not really something that most people uh, that are buying a cinema camera care about because most of us can manual focus and see the value in just controlling your focus just like you would control your aperture or shutter speed or whatever. So like autofocus for me isn't a make or break. But for certain people and for certain types of jobs, autofocus is important. And the autofocus on this camera is just not that good. It's good enough to like, you know, acquire focus and then like turn it off if you have like a autofocus lens like a micro four thirds lens or you know one of the ones that are compatible yeah you can like get something in focus but you can't use it for like tracking and things like that because it's contrast based it's going to get that wobbly thing it's essentially like you know gh5 type autofocus maybe even a little bit worse i'm not sure like yeah but it's not it's not great and you wouldn't want to use it whereas like if you got something like an fx6 or a c70 and of course those are more expensive cameras but if you got one of those cameras those have autofocus that you can rely on so there is something to be said for that that is you know one of the things that you lose having this cheaper system you can't put everything into the camera and have it also be really affordable the other area which is more major in my opinion again for me not that big of a deal which is why i've still been using this camera uh, you know after two years so i shoot a lot of music videos i do shoot like some interview and like other stuff too uh, and when i do that um i use uh, my zoom h6 right 
because the preamps in this camera are not good, <laughs> okay? Uh, you just, generally speaking, you just don't wanna use the preamps in this camera. It's enough for like scratch audio and stuff like that, but generally you wanna be recording into another uh, device because one, yeah, the preamps aren't that strong, they're not that clean, and there are even issues depending on how you're powering the camera. Um, and you know, if you're powering your microphone through the same uh, power source, sometimes uh, when you plug that in, you get like this really weird noise when you're monitoring, like it's just not good for you know certain audio solutions um and that isn't a problem like the noise thing doesn't happen all the time it's only in like very like it, it's a thing i was able to like i found out about in another video and i tried to like recreate that in my camera so i had to like pinpoint what the problem was and it's essentially like the camera and the audio device being powered through the same thing and also like you're trying to monitor at the same you know if you're trying to if it's that specific soup of things for some microphones and some like audio devices you will end up getting noise when you try and monitor which is like uh that really sucks right but for me i shoot mostly music videos so i'm not really using the audio from the video that i get and on in the cases that i am generally i like to get a sound person that's just dedicated to making sure all the sound is right um and it, even if i'm doing it myself like i have my h6 that has like the you know safety track recording and stuff like that and i think a lot of people especially if you're coming from like mirrorless world might already have something like an h4n or an h6 or something like that and if you're used to that workflow already then again this isn't going to be a big deal for you but if you are comparing it to some other cinema cameras um, again, those cameras are a little bit more expensive, but if you're just comparing it to, you know, the world of cinema cameras, there are some options if you want to spend more that are going to give you really excellent audio with, you know, XLRs. Like with the Z Cam, you have to get a breakout cable to get full size XLRs. It's just like a mini XLR that's stereo, and then you do breakout cables into that. On a lot of these other, you know, more expensive cinema cameras, you just have two XLR inputs that you can just go straight into and get uh, awesome audio. They have really good preamps on the Sonys and the Canons. So that's something to think about, right? Like if that's really important for you uh, and you do like a lot of, um, I don't know, maybe like interviews or like certain doc stuff, having that audio like on the camera be really good might be a deal breaker for you. So that's something I definitely want to make people aware of. Uh, but I think it's something that Zcam will probably address in like one of the future iterations of the camera because that is something that people have complained about in the group. Like everyone kind of knows about it, that the preamps aren't the best. They're okay, you can use them, um, but they're just not the cleanest, especially if you're doing some really professional and trying to get really clean audio. Not the best. You want to use an external audio solution. So. Who would I advise to get this camera and not get this camera? Like I just said, people who uh, really need good internal preamps. So if you're doing things where you're doing interviews and you want to plug the mic directly into the camera without having to worry about using external devices and then syncing audio and stuff like that, that's who I would say, you know, you might want to stay away from this camera if I'm being completely honest. Pretty much everyone else, like if you don't mind using external audio, or if you shoot a lot of music videos, or like commercial things where you're gonna always have another sound person and you're, you know, syncing audio anyway, like all, like in a, any other use case, I think like the Z Cam system is really good because it's so modular and so versatile. Um, and it just gives a lot of options. Uh, you know, it's really useful like on set for like multiple operator use if you need to do that. And you can configure it for, you know, single operator use really easily it, just because it's such a versatile camera. It has such good codecs, image quality, like frame rates, pretty much everything you would need other than good audio and autofocus. So I think a lot of people uh, would do really well with this camera if you want to have a camera that you rig out.
Okay, so for me, I'll have mine rigged out with a monitor, a V mount battery, external audio recorder, all these things. So if you want to rig out a camera, if that's like cool to you, or if you know just something that you don't mind, then again, the ZCam system is for you. Otherwise, like you know, these cameras aren't really meant to be used, not rigged out, unless you're using them as like a crash cam or something like that. Um, so that's something to think about. If you want something that you're not gonna rig out at all, then you might want to go with like uh, the Blackmagic 6K Pro or like the C70, something like that, where you don't necessarily have to add a bunch of different things on, and you know, having cables to manage and things like that, right? And another group of people that this camera uh, could be really good for are people who want to start experiencing and experimenting with raw video. Because raw video, you know, if you come from the world of photography, you know, raw photos are just more versatile because you can change more things in post. You have more control in post. Um, and it's the same thing for raw video. You have two raw video codecs. So uh, Z-RAW which um, if you are on Windows and use Premiere, great. If you use Final Cut, um, yeah, there's a plugin for that, but it doesn't work in Resolve. Uh, neither does ProRes RAW. So if you're a Resolve user, that's another person. Like if you're just hardcore, you want to use Resolve, you know, you probably also want to just get a Blackmagic camera because or, or just like if you're fine with, if you don't care about RAW and you're fine with just using ProRes, then it would be fine. But you can't get like, you know, the, the max potential out of this camera and also use DaVinci Resolve, at least not right now. I'm hoping in the future, um, I think eventually they'll probably support ProRes RAW, I hope. Um, yeah, if not zero, um, yeah, but you know, that, that, that's another thing that you want to consider. If you're hardcore into resolve, then eh, cause you're not going to be able to use the full potential of this camera. I use Premiere most of the time. I do like resolve. It's really cool. Uh, which is why, and at work we use black magic cameras. So I'm like very familiar with the pocket 6k, like the regular old one. Um, and yeah, it would be nice, uh, to be able to have raw capabilities in Resolve, but you don't, okay? So, you know, you want, if you are fine with using Premiere or Final Cut, then cool. Because you have ProRes RAW, you got Z-RAW, there's plugins for that, so you can use both of those. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Z-Cam. Uh, I have the E2, and just my general thoughts on the whole system and the ecosystem. I like the cameras a lot. You know, they're not 100% perfect, but I think for a lot of people, they're really useful. Um, and they're really fun and easy cameras to use. Uh, you know, easy to balance on a gimbal because it's just a cube, really versatile, you know, especially if you're like a YouTuber or something like that and you want to have high quality streaming into your computer without having to have an external capture card. Like I can take mine and I've used it to do some of the live streams on this channel actually, where I just hook up to my desktop via Ethernet and live stream straight from the camera. For, you know, specific users this camera like really there's nothing that does what like all of the things that this camera does in one so uh, for a very specific person this camera is perfect uh, and you know that person's kind of like myself uh, for certain other people this camera is like a good option you know as good as like some of the other ones and for certain people you know with the audio issues if you're a hardcore resolve user so on and so forth this might be a skip for you it really depends honestly on your use case um, yeah, and what you care about in a camera and what you use your camera for. But for me, I think it's really awesome. And I hope that the information that I shared with you was helpful in informing your decision on whether or not you want to buy a Z-Cam camera and get into the whole ecosystem. If you have any questions at all, you can leave them in the comment section. I'll reply to all of the comments. Uh, I've been kind of inactive on YouTube for a while. I've been growing other YouTube channels for work. Um, but uh, 
yeah <laughs> i'm i'm here so i will reply to everything in the comment section of this video uh and thank you guys so much for watching i hope you got a lot of value out of this and uh i'll see you in the next video oh yeah also also subscribe you know hit the thumbs up button like this video um subscribe tell your friends uh and be back because i have other things that i want to review and talk about i want to review some lights like i got the nan like small pavo tubes like just the tiny ones and like i made like those background lights i made them myself there's like a little diy product project but you guys didn't see i'm like hiding a c stand behind me conveniently actually two c stands but yeah and and i got some new lights some gvm lights and stuff so there's lots of stuff i, I can review and lots of things i can talk about also like life stuff you know that's been going on with me so yeah, stay tuned to the channel uh, and keep watching. Thanks. <laughs>